All right. So looking at this, we have a large specimen. And then deep down in the dermis, we have this, well, it's like a pretty big clot, or at least what was a, a clot. Um, lots of blood, fibrin in there. Looks junky. Yep. So it looks like clot there, <clears throat> even mm -hmm. even though it's not totally in focus. I think we still there's fibrin and some cells mixed in and some blood. But then what's happening over here? It looks like it's trying to recannulize. So trying to open this blood vessel back up or kind of make its own little wall over here. So this would be good for IPEH or Masson's tumor. Yeah, this is a really good example of so-called Masson's tumor with air quotes around it because it's not really a neoplasm at all. It is just like you said, it's a thrombus that is recanalizing. So it is a pattern of organizing thrombus. When a thrombus forms uh, in a vessel or in any setting, it's got basically three options. It either dissolves and undergoes thrombolysis or number two, it totally scars down and blocks off the vascular space and then the blood has to find a new path around it. Or number three, it recanalizes and makes new lumens through the middle of it. And one, uh, sometimes the pattern of endothelial cells digging new lumens through that thrombus um, creates this unique, very busy papillary look. And so this is called um, uh, intravascular papillary endothelial hyperplasia, IPEH, like you said or um, Masson's tumor in honor of Dr. Pierre Masson, who described this in the late 1800s, I believe. And I, my understanding is that in his original paper, which I think is in French and I have not read, is that this, is, this was uh, uh, mentioned as being something that can resemble angiosarcoma, but, but is present inside a pre-existing vascular space. And I think that's very apt and important description to remember, because otherwise you're going to find areas in this that look very complex, very ramifying, anastomosing, interconnecting channels, the kinds of vascular channel growth that we see typically in angiosarcoma, but that we can sometimes see in benign things also. But it's the thing that makes people worry. It's cellular, it's busy, it's not well organized and lobulated, and it's got all these channels. But if we go way back to low power, it's sitting inside a big, huge, dilated cavernous vascular space. You can see more of it here, more of it here. It can exist inside like kind of an aneurysmally dilated vessel, a venous leg, uh, the dilated vessels inside hemorrhoids. Um, I most often see it inside of benign vascular malformations or cavernous hemangiomas, which probably are actually a type of venous malformation. Um, it can be hard, especially if you get a, a deeper one where they've done a needle biopsy or you just get a partial sample and you only see this stuff and you can't see that you're inside a vessel. But with practice, even in that setting, you can be pretty sure that this is what you're dealing with. And one of the best things is just like you said, find the clot. Find the area of definite fibrin thrombus, like right here. And unfortunately, it's a little out of focus. And then you can see the thrombus beginning to kind of clump together. This stuff is pink smudgy and it's got blood this is fibrin and you can see the cells here most of which are endothelial cells but also some various you know inflammatory cells macrophages histiocytes whatever uh, lymphocytes and you can see that they're beginning to grab this and to pull it apart into little small clusters and nodules little pieces which are then wrapped by endothelial cells so finding that transition from a solid sheet like area of of uh, fibrin thrombus and watching as the endothelial cells kind of dive and dig in between the fibrin and then carve out these channels leaving behind these little papillae which eventually over time seem to scar down and collagenize and and become not real fibrin anymore but more like actual collagenized fibrous tissue that's what's happening here okay so if you had this same kind of pattern of growth into the normal dermis wrapping around normal pre-existing dermal collagen that would be very worrisome for like angiosarcoma but here when this is happening in a vascular channel and is recanalizing thrombus, then this is totally benign. So the context is important. Also, these are bland, uh, benign appearing endothelial cells. They don't usually have much atypia, uh, but it sometimes can be a little challenging to uh, evaluate endothelial atypia when you're first starting out um, until you have a lot of practice looking at vascular things. So uh, finding the pre-existing vascular channel on the outside is really helpful and important um, to, to solving this problem. But this is a nice example, even though I can't quite get it in good focus. Nice example of uh, intravascular papillary endothelial hyperplasia. When I sign this out in my diagnosis line, I usually, like on a case like this, 
I would say like a, a, a benign vascular, I would probably say a benign vascular malformation, or we could say, you know, large dilated vessel with organizing thrombus. I usually don't actually put Masson tumor or intravascular papillary endothelial hyperplasia in the diagnosis line because it sounds very complicated and scary. It's just a very busy, scary, complicated sounding name to a very bland actual process. But it's just a clot that's organizing. So, at, so to avoid, especially if it's a, a treating physician who may not be familiar with this terminology, I don't want someone to think it's some weird kind of tumor that they have to worry about. I want to let them know this is a benign process <clears throat> that doesn't really need anything further unless it's a, you know, a mass that's causing an annoyance or a problem for the patient. So that's the way I handle it in my practice.